our daily readings from the Bible, reading a chapter each day from the New Testament. In Psalm 119, verse 105, we read, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Lord, this March, as we continue reading in the New Testament together, keep us walking in your truth and your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The readings today are from Romans chapter 6. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead th through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with Christ, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. Slaves to righteousness. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you are entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. Today's reading from Romans 6 should not be taken in isolation. It is part of Paul's teaching to the Romans about the gospel. He begins in the first chapters by showing that all are under sin, both Jew and Gentile. He then goes back to Abraham to show that he was justified by faith before the law was introduced by Moses. By the time we come to, we come to chapter 5, he is expounding the gospel in terms of faith alone. The Christian now has all 
of the good news to be justified by faith. He then shows that it was through Adam that death was passed down to all people. The law was introduced later to show the intensity of sin, but God gives grace to cover the awareness of sin. So in chapter 6, Paul anticipates what his readers might be thinking. The more we sin, the more we receive grace. So shall we sin even more to receive more grace? He says very emphatically, by no means. He then goes on to show that when they came to believe in Christ, it meant death to the old sinful life. They have been crucified with Christ and they were raised with him in resurrection power to a new life. This is shown out in verse 17 when he says, But thanks be to God that through th though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. The before and after of becoming a Christian, that is what that is about. The new Christians were receiving teaching that explained to them what it meant to be to committed to Jesus Christ as Lord. Sometimes we meet those who are not fully from the heart committed Christians, perhaps half-hearted, or even I'll give it a go and to see if it works. Then they wonder why their Christian life does not give them that inner peace they were led to expect. So today we have only one part of the whole act of being a Christian. Keep going and by the time you arrive in chapter 8 you will see the full blossoming of the Christian life as they are led by the Spirit. It is all one story, one act of commitment to Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you today, O oh God, and the promise that you have will always be with us. So whatever is before us, may we rejoice in the great salvation that we have in our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Help us to recognize the sins that try to master us and give us the love and power to be true followers of Jesus Christ, that we may be found to be slaves of our only master. In his name we ask these our prayers. Amen.